Hey folks, Mr. Justin here with Secret Weapon Miniatures and another Workbench Wednesday. Uh, first, I want to thank you for joining me again. This is number 20, and it's great to have you with me. Of course, uh, if this is your first time joining, please remember to like, subscribe, click on the bells, whatever you need to do uh, in order to make sure that you keep up with the episodes. Uh, we also have information on uh, the website and, of course, our Facebook page uh, so that you can keep up on uh, new releases and previews and things like that as well. Today, uh, probably no surprise, I'm going to be working on these uh, warp core bases. Uh, it's the last set we need for our uh, display. Uh, we're also going to be taking the uh, painted sets and making a poster to put into retailers so that you know that they uh, stock our stuff and you can see all the themes and decide what it is you need to get. So, uh, hey, I can get the keyboard out of here. I'm all done with that. Turn that off, get it off my desk. Here we go. Turn on an airbrush because, of course, I'm going to be airbrushing today. All right. The other thing uh, I'm hoping to uh, make time to do today, I uh, I picked up these little uh, Bandai A wings uh, the other day, and uh, of course, being a Bandai kit, I had expected them to be uh, color shots. Uh, instead, the color portions are stickers, uh, but it does come with my two A wings, which I really enjoy. Um, so I actually thought I would uh, build one today and get it ready uh, for another episode. So hopefully, I'll be able to make some time for that. Because the A-wing fighter is actually uh, my favorite. The y wings a close second, but it's only because the uh, artists did such a great job absolutely covering that in Gribblies. That's right, and I discovered last week that working that far forward is not natural for me. So I'm gonna adjust the camera. Maybe next week I'll even remember in advance. Here we go. All right. Hey, hello, hello, Jess. Good to have you with us again. I uh, definitely know you're one of our uh, regular viewers, and I really appreciate uh, having you here today. All right. So the first thing I have to do, since uh, I only started this uh, project this morning, and I have not had a lot of time to think about the warp core bases, is decide on some colors. Uh, so I'm going to want to do one in metallics. Uh, one in grays and one's in blues. So I'm going to make you the blues. I'm going to make you the grays. I'm going to make you the metallic. So, reach my paints. That's always a good thing. And hey, Stephen, good to have you. All right, so let's see. Am I starting with the metallics, the grays, or the blues? Well, I'll tell you what. Since I'm going to be airbrushing, I'm going to pull out my inks here. Get my uh, towel on. And uh, what do I find first? Process cyan, which is a lie. There can't be white in a process color. <laughs> but I found some uh, turquoise here, so I'm going to start in on the blues over here. And uh, for that, actually going to do a quick bit of uh, brushing here. Let's find my good blue. Where's the one I want? Get in here so I can see my colors. That's the one I want. Grabbing a bit of Colony Gray. Woo, bringing the bases back on screen. Uh, and that's for this one. Zip up, dee dee da Get a tiny bit of water on the brush. Tap that off. Get wet. Tap it off. I just like to make sure my brush is damp. Actually, I need to in the paint just a little bit. So I'll dab that off again, make sure it's not too moist. Get my brush, make sure you guys can see me. And uh, in this case, uh, given that uh, I'm just going to keep those recesses as is, I'm using this side of my brush again. Just pull that paint across. 
just with the edge. I'm not worried about the uh, streaking I'm getting at the moment because I'm going to do two thin coats. Also going to get a bit of Titan Navy. I'm right. Hey, yeah, Titan Dark Navy. I was right for a change. Yay. A couple of drops of that in my pot. Set this aside. Grab a smaller brush. And I'm still using my talcon this morning because I don't need to do any glazing or anything like that. So I'm going to come in here and just do a little bit of wet blending, very rough, just by adding some of that color close to the base area over here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and use the same brush to do that. So I want to blend that in, create some shadow and some modulation here close to that panel. the right color get the areas where I want that second coat to be solid and blending it in dry off my brush get all that excess paint off of there I'm trying to blend and not Again, so I'm just wiping the excess there. And gently start to blend this back up. Making it a little more dry than I would have liked, so it's just pulling that paint off. So I'll put that back on and I'll just uh, blend over the top of it in a minute. Now I've got a little bit of modulation at least. And of course, being me, I'll come back later and do some work with pencils. But that is a good start for our blue base. Welcome, Charles. Question about the paint. Are there uh, agitators in them? Uh, over full on the mech paint. Uh, my apologies. Uh, that may be the case. Uh, the crew at uh, the warehouse is still uh, figuring out the process. And I see what you mean. Uh, these are a little bit uh, over full. Um, well, hey, you're welcome for the extra paint. <laughs> but yeah, I know that can be a problem. Um, and on the mech line, there are no agitators. On the um, uh, weathering line, there are. Uh, I will be adding um, agitators to the next run of the uh, mech paint. Uh, I know anybody who's uh, followed along with my work for uh, long enough uh, knows that I'm generally against agitators, but that's not true in the uh, closed bottles. Uh, it's only true in the uh, open pots like uh, like P3. Uh, you never want to put an agitator in a pot like this or GW. You just don't. It's a horrible idea. Uh, but in these, no, it's just fine because all the paint is uh, sealed up and you're not going to wind up with that crusty ridge around the outside edge like you do in any other pots. All right, so I've got these are my grays, which is going to be airbrushed. Is it? Yeah, it's going to be because that's the one. All right, and this was going to be my metallic. So for metallic, I need to come over to the weather line. You should be right there. Why aren't you right there? Are you in the wrong spot? Are you in the wrong spot? All right, well, I'm grabbing the weather. 
pants thing on because some of the pants aren't where aren't in their correct spot. They got uh, bumped out of the way here. Remember with the thing and the stuff and the you look like oh you look like dark wood is what you are. Here's engine metal. Engine grime. Ooh, I definitely want some tire black. Color's too good not to find an excuse to not to use it. I used oil for some staining. Well, I'll be a little copper fixtures, the brass casings. I'm not sure we'll use the brass casings, but you know, it doesn't hurt. It's a metallic. Uh, but sure enough, my uh Oh, I know what happened. We took this to uh, Gamma with us, and uh, that's why it's mixed up. And I'll bet someone walked off with my dark iron after the demos, or I handed it to him as a sample. But I'd really like to find my dark iron. So give me one second. I expected it to be on my rack, of course. Now I'm hoping that since it's the color I had the most of in the house, I'll be able to find Bible here in the. Uh, Pit of despair that is uh, what my son made of the well organized paint bin over here. I finally picked up uh, a set of uh, paints, all for him, but uh, have not had a chance to go through and organize this yet again. All right, well, I'm going to give up on the uh, dark iron. Uh, that's actually not true. I'm going to teach you guys a little trick here. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, Charles, the the paint will mix even without an agitator in there. Uh, works just fine. Um, so I'm gonna cheat and make a paint. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the uh, engine metal. I'm gonna put some in the well over here. Remember, you don't want to just keep squeezing if the paint's not coming out. It's a good way to make a mess. Grab an old airbrush needle or a pen or paper clip or something and clear the blockage. So now that I've got my engine metal down, I'm going to take my power knife and I'm going to take some metallic iron pigment. A little less. I'm going to start mixing in very small amounts. And I'm going to make a different color paint. Because I can. Mm, more of that. What a nice dark color. Oh, I'm going to need some water. Boink. Since the dry pigment, of course, is dry, it's going to absorb that moisture, make the paint really dry. That is a good color. It's not my absolute favorite dark iron paint, but since I'm going to need some of the uh, engine metal, we put them next to each other and you can see the difference. It's clear as day. All right, so let's see. Let's do these in the metallic. Also gonna hmm, do some um, hmm, 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 no. Stick my grays over there. Uh, but over here, I was gonna do a little turquoise thing on this, and now I'm thinking I might do that in the metallic too. But I'll, I'll make that the turquoise because I'm actually just gonna airbrush over the top of that uh, instead of doing my blending. Um, all right, so next metallic color over here.
Actually, I think what I want to do is cover the whole base. I'm going to do a uh, heavy dry brush of the copper fixtures uh, over the tiles here, though. And I'm just making this up as I go. Just whatever strikes me. One of the nice things about getting a paint piece is I don't have to have a plan when I start. Some of them, obviously, we do. Some dictate their plan, like a you know, scrapyard or urban streets. So. There we go. Oh, and thank you for the compliment on the paint, Charles. Yeah, we're. Uh, I'm very happy with how uh, the new round turned out. Um, we'll keep making improvements as we uh, formulate new lines, and uh, yeah, you can expect great things from Secret Weapon Paint. Um, lots of good stuff in the queue. It's going to be uh, really great. And that's all I can say about that. <laughs> I'd love to say more, but that's all you get. Mm. Excuse me. All right, so this is my gray. I'm going to back over here to my inks, find my ever-wonderful cool gray, the airbrush, which, ooh, did I clean it last time? Hey, I did, good. I'm even uh, working with the incredible Jason Eaton on uh, one of our new paint lines. And that's going to be really something. Oh, wait, I'm not talking about that. All right. So I am going to uh, just airbrush this whole thing gray so that it's a more solid gray than it is at the moment, a little softer. Set that aside. Hey, uh, well, Charles, welcome to the uh, Gumpla community. Uh, you can thank uh, Emily uh, for this as well, because she dragged me into it. The first one's for free. She came to the house with uh, bear guys for all of us. And, uh, well, <laughs> the rest, as they say, is uh, history, because now we have a mech line. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually putting a little bit of the gray over this around those edges. This is an opaque color, so I'm not using a lot. I'm really focusing on the edges, but that's going to soften up that blue for me and add some definition over here. On this, I'm actually going to grab a card. What have we got today? Oh, I'm not sure I can use this one. It's the Freeport Bakery uh, card from when we ordered our uh, wedding pies. How about that? All right, I'll keep that. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, here we go. If you don't put anything on the back of your card, it's scratch paper. So same thing, I'm focusing on the edges. Come back with a quick dust over the whole thing. So now I'm going to put the other metallic over the top of that. All right, back to this one. Now I get to decide uh, if I'm doing custom grays or if I have the right colors in the bin today. Yeah, one of the things I love about getting sucked into Gundam building is... I feel like, well, it's it's what model making ought to be. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, there's such a, a stigma about like um, snap together kits, right? Oh, those are for kids. Uh, I'm sorry, my uh, perfect grade Millennium Falcon that lights up and everything is a snap together kit from Bandai. 
Uh, Bandai makes incredible models at incredible prices, and the fact that they can get uh, multiple colors and multiple materials in those shots. You know, why aren't I putting together, uh, you know, since we have uh, Blood Angels rhinos, why don't they come in red plastic? Um, why don't they snap together? Um, why are they 50 bucks? Uh, but, you know, little things. I'm just, you know, what do I got? Nothing. All right. Uh, let's see. These are my grays. Let's take a look through here. Where's my Payne's gray? And a little bit of purple, please. Payne's gray. And uh, Violet Lake should be right here. Or Purple Lake. Uh, I also need a translucent blue. Two process cyan in here. Neither of these are actually process cyan, so I'm taking them both out. You are trash paint. Go away. Uh, I'm not saying I use a lot of white artist acrylic, but uh, get that out of there too. Marine blue. That's a good one. And you're a translucent, right? Yeah. Purple Lake is also translucent. Should be yep, good. Well, the great thing about you know if GW decided to pick up and run with those with the colored vehicles and stuff. I mean, we already know they do it for their some of their models now, but uh, it wouldn't have to cost anymore. I mean. Sure, they might upcharge it, but if suddenly all of the you know Blood Angels vehicles came in red. And I know one of the arguments they're likely to make is that their market may not want that change because you know that's specifically the hobby market versus the board game market. Uh, but I'm sorry, I don't. I don't think that distinction is uh, really necessary. Uh, I was talking about that last night as we were uh, looking at uh, my old Monster Apocalypse stuff. Monster Apocalypse is one of my favorite games of all time, hands down, bar none. Um, I have a ton of the uh, first edition pre-painted Monster Apocalypse stuff. And uh, yeah, we sat down on the table last night next to the uh, uh, new Monster Apocalypse resin hobby models. Um, the models are poor to cast. Uh, the resin is poor, um, yeah, and, and, and we can't just play it. Um, you know, my wife and kid were kind of meh about Monster Apocalypse until I brought the old stuff from the warehouse. And suddenly they're going through crazy, like, oh my god, let's play this. Let's just use these models in the new cards, which is what we're going to do. And uh, part of that is, uh, you know, Privateer saying that, well, the reason it failed is we're, not, we're a hobby market, not a pre-painted market. It's like, well, no, there were a lot of reasons that game might not have done well, and I don't think that any of them <laughs> had to do with uh, them coming repainted. And related news, we're very excited about Monster Apocalypse being back on the market. I do love the game, and I'm glad that I will be able to play with people again. But yeah, I'm just going to roll out with my uh, first edition pre-painted stuff and use new cards and new bases if I have to or whatever. But All right, you're damp. All right, and you're my grays, so that's, tied. that's time for paints gray. Payne's Gray is the best gray. But I'm going to come in, and this is not a good brush for the detail work I'm about to do. 
and then I'll manage. And I could mask off those other sections. Probably should, but where's the fun in that? Hmm. Which I would have to do here. Or hit it with a brush, but that's no fun. So we're going to take... Uh... Oh, I can't use that card. Who knows? All right. Helps to set the brush down, Justin. Actually, that's going to be much easier. Yeah, I'll finally tape. I always do my best to avoid the tape, just because I find it generally slower. But that's only true if I can get a good angle in here, right? If I can't get in there, and it's a lot of work, then I'm not saving myself time. <laughs> that was clearly faster. So, Kerbunk. Oops, that's right, I went too far. Doesn't come all the way through there. All right, well, something to remember here. So I have to do that. That and where are you? Right there. That. Boom. Gotta make sure that does go all the way off. It does. I don't need to mask the other end. Blanc. Today's broadcast is actually going to run a little short uh, because my son has shortened days today. And uh, normally he uh, wants to go to his after school program, hang out with his buddies, play Pokemon and whatnot. Uh, today he said he really wanted to come home early. Hang out with me, build models. It's hard to say no to that. But it means that he gets out at noon, so I kind of need to be there at noon. And, you know, it's the little things. All right, so now I have to fix this section. So I'm going to tape again. Kapow. Kapow. Do I need Payne's Gray anywhere else before I do that? Yes, I do. Payne's Gray over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Helps. 
not to miss. <laughs> there we go. That'll be good for later. All right, back to this. Rinse. I'm going to get all of the anchor paint out of my brush. Especially before I put in any isopropyl to clean it out. Which I'm not doing right now. Yeah, I'm such a pain. <laughs> All right. What mistake? I don't even know what you're talking about. That never happened. All right. Well, it happened over there. So let's fix that one too. <laughs> All right. In this case, I should be able to be even lazier. Probably fix that one with a card, but I'm not gonna. Because I already have tape on my fingers. Boom. Oh, wait. Man. Some people. There we go. All right, so that is my light gray. I can rinse. Let's see, this was the metallic, this is the gray, this is the blue. Get my turquoise now. Actually changing my mind on how to approach this one. And actually, I'm not going to use the turquoise yet. I'll go straight to marine blue. Let's see what this does for me. Keep it up, Jess. The puns are always welcome here. So there's my blues so far. A little darker than I'd like it. So what I'm actually going to do is take a drop of turquoise. Get right under my airbrush with the dark blue. The marine blue, which is dark blue. And I'm just going to mix it up with a brush right there in my airbrush. You can also mix it by doing the blowback technique, but that tends to make a big mess, so I don't need any more messes. So now I'm just going to come from an angle, focus on this edge. new definition. Last but not least, clean that all out. Go to straight turquoise, which is an opaque. Come back. Just along those edges again. Hitting just the tiles. A little more definition. And I'll come back in a bit with some weathering and uh, other fun stuff. But let's see. Let's go back to our grays. That would actually benefit from a bit of the... Uh, marine blue, actually. Put a couple of drops of the marine blue back in here, which is 
from here. One, two, three. There's more. Woo! I'm making a mess. Like I do. Alright. Now I'm going to mix up a custom color. Because I'm going to finish the grays here. And I'm going to do that with the green blue, which I can't keep track of to save my life. We'll put dropper full. That's way more paint than I'm going to need to finish one base, of course. But in this case, I'm doing it for the color management side of it, and so that I can mix five drops of that to start with, a little bit of water, because I'm looking for translucency. Mix. Okay. Here's where I have fun. Now, with that base, I will take a full drop for that and start adding this to it. I've got my two colors, the dark blue and the blue gray. And I'm actually going to use this to glaze the whole thing, just as a little mask. Check to see if I need to add isopropyl to it in just a second. There we go. Use a little bit of this on my blues again because there's not the definition I was really hoping for in here. So I'm going to come back and uh, just hit the tiles. Again, avoiding the area directly next to that panel. definition this time. All right, last but not least, rinse that out. Now the gray, cool gray, is an opaque color. We're going to fix that. It's the only time I add uh, isopropyl to my uh, paints or inks or anything like that. The first thing I need to do is add some water. Uh, otherwise, the uh, isopropyl will start to break it down. The acrylic medium is not thinned. And I can see how it's flowing off the edges of the cups. Yeah, I'm getting still a fair bit of stick to the sides there. I want to I correct all of that. So I've got my little isopropyl bottle, and it will go. Boop. You can already see it bubbling and fizzing, so I've got to mix fast, because I don't want it to break down the acrylic medium before I get a chance to use it. But now... You'll notice it doesn't even want to sit in the middle. <laughs> Actually going to add a little bit more water. Should not need more isopropyl, but we'll see. We do. And again, I'm doing deciding that by checking the sides of my cups here. So now it flows. Still fizzing. Here we go. That's what I want to see. Boom. Now it's pulling off of the sides. See that? It's got legs. All right. My very thin translucent gray. Get a 
fooling here, of course, because the edge. So I'm going to change direction. Translucent gray. Keeps all my pre shading. Boom. Solid pass, and then mostly on the edge. Boom, translucent gray. It keeps on appreciating, but not gray enough. So we're going to add a little more gray. It's still too blue for my taste. There we go. And last but not least, I can hit the whole center panel here without having to worry about the rest. This a little extra gray won't hurt them. Now I get in there with my detailing, a little extra color, some weathering, some washes. It's going to be beautiful. Now, of course, I want to do a little bit of cheating. I think I'm done with the airbrush, so I'm going to turn that off so it doesn't bug us anymore. Alrighty, um, I'm going to start with my white, make sure this is a watercolor, or my blue. So I'm actually going to pull out a blue watercolor today uh, to hit the panel lines here. Um, I'll probably switch back to white, but I might try to not be so bad. Pennsylvania. Watercolor, watercolor. I need to go my non-watercolors out of there as well. Oops, I'm just going to come through, do, do, do. Hit all my edges. All of the pencil fits just right. I'm doing edge highlighting with watercolor. And I can blend it in with a wet brush on my finger. Alright, I need to find some YouTube safe music so that I stop just randomly singing at you for blind folks. Otherwise, I'll have to just start singing musicals at you. <laughs> These would benefit from a layer of matte before I try to do this. So I may cut this short today. Uh, because it's not wanting to stick on account of the fact that the inks are slightly, uh, leave a slightly satin finish. Uh, the surface is smooth, and without that grit, uh, it doesn't want to stick. And for people tuning in for the first time, just seeing this technique, yes, this is how I do my edge highlighting on pretty much everything. <laughs> Got a whole collection of watercolor pencils, of course. And uh, I do find that white is the color I use most often, almost exclusively, in fact. Uh, because it's a watercolor pencil, I can blend it into the colors around it. Use some visual cheats to uh, make it work. Oh, look, these little things. Psh, 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 psh. There's that, there's that, there's that. Much softer edges already. decal there in a little bit. 
or freehand some numbers or something. All right, back to this one. <coughs> Excuse me, please. Oh my goodness. All right, pencil back, and I'm not kidding. I've got a bunch. Pencil back in the pencil bin. All right. This is my metallic base, and I was going to move all my airbrush stuff out of my way and then do a bit of dry brushing with the copper fixtures. We're going to have some fun with uh, dry brushing these colors today. I always like to mention, too, I know there's a lot of folks that will poo-poo dry brushing. Oh, maybe you prefer, you know, oh, I, I don't dry brush anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm a better model artist than that. And all that sort of thing. Um, it's worth remembering that uh, Laszlo and Victoria Lamb, uh, each of their uh, OSL uh, was dry brushed. Victoria Lamb is also the first woman to win a Slayer Sword with some dry brushing. So don't poo poo dry brushing. Everything has a place, everything's just a technique in your toolbox. Slight uh, purple patina under the copper here. Mute that out a bit over there. Now we're going to have fun again. So I'm going to keep this brush dirty. Oh, that engine metal is dry. So let's try, excuse me, try again. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but with my engine metal. I'm going to start here because I want a little bit of that copper to come over to the grates. And I'll come back with a clean brush later, but see, I still get some of that copper. So color harmony. Never hurt anything. No, you're actually plugged again. All right. Fine. Kerpoke. Oh, yeah. No, that's fine. See how much copper pigment is coming out here. I'll show you guys. Still a fair bit. So I'm going to start blending this up. Because again, I want that copper color over here. Just to keep that interesting. I still want more of that. More, more, more. and copper but we're getting shinier so it's a little more selective now there we go put this wa brush in the wash I grab another one of the same use a new pot because I don't know that the other one wasn't contaminated you can see some of that copper in there so I don't want that this time, I want just the straight engine metal, a nice, bright, beautiful silver color, just over this. Because it's a, such a fine metallic pigment in here, actually it gets tough for me to see it sometimes unless I angle the light just right. There we go. And this time without uh, brushing it off, but I'm using the back side. Coming in. Gonna hit the edges. The wet side. Use the other side again. Blend in a bit. And I can come 
in select spots like along the edge. Better to find it. Yeah. Find that out. So there's the uh, still start <laughs> of our metallic. So let's take a look at what we've got and get rid of that. So these are the three that we've got at this point. The one that's going to wind up our grades completely. Oh, miniature may have a question. What would you say are the pros and cons of blending with acrylics, oils, dry pigments, or watercolor pencils? And how do you choose which to use for a given situation? Oh my gosh, I'll totally derail this for that. Um, that is a great question. Uh, so we'll talk about, um, uh, well, there's, it's not a question of pro and con. It, it really is a question of the effect that you're trying to get. Um, there are things, uh, for instance, the dry pigments. We'll start with that, uh, especially since uh, this is actually a good excuse for me to use them and keep moving forward. Uh, in fact, I already have the wash cups from last time I did rust on uh, an episode of this. Um, so, well, heck, the cup is a good example. Uh, when a dry pigment dries, it looks like dirt because it's dirt. <laughs> so when you're trying to create a dirt effect like that, um, it's the best way to go. Uh, whereas, you know, you take the uh, roof of the uh, truck that I'm working on here. I'll get it back where the zoom is best. Um, and even the, the pink streaking, all of this, all of this is acrylic. Um, except for that. I guess I did come in here with some pigments at these points. Um, but yeah, like even the uh, oxidization here on the hood, that's the uh, engine rust acrylic. Um, and because that's a translucent paint, I can get that effect. These are, the weathering paints are specifically formulated for how I would use them in weathering. Um, of course, I still love to say that, uh, you know, here's uh, exhaust rust, uh, whereas Jess Rich uses the same color to highlight flesh in the models that she paints. Um, well, because it's a nice translucent salmon color uh, and it works out. Um, but again, if I'm looking for that dry effect, I'm going to use pigments to create the dust and the dirt. Uh, the benefit to oils and enamels is working time. Um, with oils, I can spend all day going back and forth over it, making it more translucent, remove it completely. Uh, the enamels, eventually the solvents in that are going to um, start to interact with the um, the acrylic paints, uh, but it takes a lot of work for that to happen. And again, this is why I use so many Talcon brushes. I don't want to put good brushes. That is not a good brush. You're not using my brush. You get the heck out of here. Your Seamus brush. <laughs> I toss it over to my son's desk. Uh-oh. I'm gonna, I may be out of my small Talcom brushes, which means I'm gonna have to destroy a good brush. Or find a ruined one in my trash bin here. I actually keep uh, a bin of brushes that I've retired. You know, so that when you've got a Raphael that starts like that, <laughs> I'll use that. Hey, Greg, welcome. Always good to have you, sir. Thanks for coming back. All right, all of these need a bit more ISO, so let's do that. All right. I'm doing metallics. I'm start with the violet. Get that old dark rust color down here in the recesses. And uh, Miniature Mayhem, did that answer your uh, question? I want to make sure you're uh, satisfied with your service today.
rinse that one off. And hey, my pleasure. Uh, seriously, Miniature Mayhem, uh, answering questions like that is my favorite part of the job. Um, yeah, Workbench Wednesday began as the uh, Ask Mr. Justin broadcast, and the whole idea was that I would take uh, whatever questions I'd gotten the week prior and uh, turn them into a show. Uh, so it's still my favorite thing, uh, whether you're commenting on the videos or on Facebook asking for something. Uh, yeah, please, uh, anyone watching uh, live or uh, uh, once it's in the can, uh, yeah, please let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, it's my favorite part of the job, and I would love to make sure that you get the episode you're looking for. All right. So that is the start of the rust over here. Oh, I actually want that violet color in the recesses over here. Remember to be very careful when you're working with ISO washes because uh, nothing is better at stripping paint than an isopropyl. Well, nothing safe is better at stripping paint than isopropyl. Wait a minute, Justin. That's right, we get some rust on here. I like rust. I'm sure everyone is shocked to hear that confession. Oh, that's why I couldn't find my little guy. He's already in a pot. Would have been a better choice. Oh, well. All right, on to this one. a little bit of that, but I don't want a lot. I'm going to get some on the surface intentionally and then dab it off with my finger. Three, two, one. It gives it a little time to interact with the acrylic. Because again, as it starts to dissolve the acrylic, the pigment will bond with it. If only a little bit. But I'll get that nice subtle color over here. And over here. Fill that one up. Where's our color? All right, let's take a look at how the uh, purple's going. Oh, still very wet because I made that one so thin. So this one's going to take longer to get around to. Um, let's see what we can do with our grays over here. And in this case, I'm going to be back to uh, brush painting in a minute. Uh, just because the rest, I mean masking the rest, would just be a giant pain in the butt. Plus, if you don't know about the warp core bases, there's actually cabling under here. So I'm going to want to be able to get in there and get color on each of these. Yeah, you can see the cabling. There, there it is. <laughs> all right, so I can scoot all the pigments out of the way. I'm not going to need you guys uh, in the near future. And I need my uh, not colony gray because you're the blue one. Boom. Kerpow. Colony gray goes here. And I need the. Ground forces gray and Federation slate. Kaboom! So my two grays. Oh, such a pretty paints. So fluid, so nice. 
so biased. All right. In this case, I am going to grab a shark because I want a number two. Don't want a number one. Some water. Uh, I'm going to start with you. You're trying to do a something delicate like this where you don't want to mask everything You're trying to make straight lines my advice is set the, find a way to set the piece down so that you're not controlling two things and then you can use your pinky to help guide you want to see it done by crazy masters uh, watch any videos on YouTube about uh, traditional pinstripers for cars it's just, it's just nutty. I love it. I love watching it. It's so amazing, uh, but it makes me a little bit uncomfortable because I literally have this little squeeze bulb with a little thing and they stick their finger on a car and they just go and walk their way down and they make these straight lines and loops and oh my God, I'm just like, woo, okay. I know some amazing painters, but what you're doing is not okay. <laughs> So I'll come back and add more definition later, either with uh, pens, pencil, something. Um, the other pencil I use a lot, that should be in this can. Where'd you go? Oh, your shirt doesn't belong there. You belong in the shirt piece. Huh. Well, if I see it, I see it, because I'd like to use it. But I'm not going to burn a lot of time looking. Uh, but it's a. Uh, a uh, quarter millimeter uh, technical pencil. That's what I did all the lines, uh, panel lines on the Millennium Falcon in. Going for that realistic color and effect since uh, they were originally done in uh, or with pencils. All right, so on that one. Same over here. There we are. Yeah, I like the definition up there, but I'll get that back. Whereas down here, it's just lovely. All right, on to the lighter gray. In this case, in that do that grab yet another dry brush there's a chance I have a whole collection of these in a bin because Much too much. Just run that all the way through. Oh, real quick, I need to clean up a section right here. Get that out of there. All that light gray is unwanted in that spot. 
Well, didn't work. Uh, that is this. This one. What? Let's see if I can correct that. Damn it. I think I just picked up the wrong color. You the right color? You're the right color. Better. And now I can go back and selectively fix that light gray right here. So I've been overlooking the edges of these panels. Help it really stand out. Better to find the space and keep me from over airbrush or over dry brushing. <laughs> Just a little bit of finger weathering there. Clean that up. There we are. And then, not surprisingly, come in here. Let's see. This may actually be uh, too large to get into those nice tiny spaces. But I can certainly define my edges. that black definition more so I'll keep it for the outside edges. Still on camera? Oh good. Well done Justin. It's the longest I've been on camera in uh, 20 broadcasts. <laughs> All right so the rest is going to be washes and a bit of the weathering effects. Um, specifically, I'll actually take one right now because I got it out earlier. This is the old oil. And I'm actually just going to take it and right here, go blurp, blurp. Clean that out, leave it in place, and let that dry. I want this to dry a bit slowly. Uh, that's why it's so thin. Uh, it'll give me that uh, old oil effect with a metallic flake and everything in here uh, that you can see a bit of. Um, but one of the things that leaving it pooled like this will do uh, is intentionally create that tide pool effect, uh, which we normally don't want. But in this case, I really do. All right, back to, oh my gosh. The yeah, isopropyl over here is still wet. Look at that. On this one, though, that yellow pigment has dried. And uh, yeah, so uh, miniature mayhem, I mean, you can very much see. Uh, I mean, that's an effect I can't really get with the acrylic, certainly all of this. Um, it just doesn't work. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this, take the water and just take that out a bit. Get my edge, get moisture out of here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of detail here.
There's some little service marks. Little extra interest. Still not really happy with the light blue tiles though, so I'm actually gonna dry brush those too. That's what goes back. Another clean brush. And uh, all right, I need Of course I have a paint for that. I can get out of my bin. Durga 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 durga. Alright, there we go. The ace light blue. Boink. that more. Uh, and in my case, no, uh, generally not holding my breath when I do the little freehand things like this. Um, anything bigger than that, yeah, probably, <laughs> but I don't uh, freehand anything very often. So I uh, don't have a means to find out. <laughs> I used to do a lot more. I actually found some old uh, models and of course some, you know, paintings from high school and stuff that I had done. They were just freehand acrylics, just me goofing off. There we go. I've got my streak, I've got my focus. That'll do nicely. Yeah, eyes. I uh, I doubt my eyes will you breathe out. It's always so you're more relaxed as you breathe out than when you hold your breath. All right. Well, I have 13 minutes before my alarm goes off to tell me to go and get my kid. So I'm going to have to stop these here. Um, obviously, these two still need some uh, tender love and care to get them ready for Adepticon. Uh, but I will uh, have photos up on the uh, website, uh, of course, of the finished pieces because we always do. And uh, now I'm pretty much calling this one. I like this one. I'll do a little bit more on the edges with a pencil, but otherwise it's good. And yeah, you can see as the old oil effect here starts to dry, right? We're getting that gloss. We're getting the uh, metallic sheen to it slightly. The discoloration over here, it's, it's great fun. I'll probably add uh, more of our effects because I have the uh, um, engine fluid as well. In fact, I'll do that now just because it's a fun one to show off. Here's the one I want. This is another one meant to use, uh, be used straight out of the pot. So this is my engine fluid, and I use this on a lot of my civilian vehicles. So I'm actually going to put that right next to the other. And again, boop. This is another translucent color, so I'm going to actually flow it around. And because it doesn't want to go in here, I'm going to force it just like that. Mix those two together, have a nice effect. I'll use some uh, blue weathering pigments to get a dry effect in there as well, and we'll have a lot of fun. But that is it for today, folks. I hope you've had a good time, 
Thank you very much for your question, uh, Miniature Mayhem. Uh, please keep the questions coming, folks. Remember that uh, my favorite part of the job is answering your questions and making these shows all about you. So, uh, yeah, uh, next week, uh, no broadcast, as I will be uh, on a plane en route to uh, Adepticon. Uh, of course, uh, maybe we'll uh, find an opportunity to do a little something special from Adepticon. If nothing else, please, if you're there, come up to the booth, say hi. Um, yeah, we'd love to shake hands and say hi and get a chance to uh, yeah, chat. Thank you for buying the product and supporting the show. As always, happy hobbying, folks, and we'll see you soon.